If you're a woodworker or a do-it-yourselfer or arts and crafts or car custom stuff or whatever you're into, boy, these days a 3D printer is, all, is, is, is a must. <laughs> it's a nice thing to have. I've got one this week and we want to take a look at it, but it has a really great feature. It's called Price, Price, and Price. <laughs> yeah, let's do this. Howdy folks, and yes, woodworking things, there's hundreds of projects, thousands of projects that you can uh, make on a 3D printer for woodworking. This is a centering tool. I just printed this one yesterday because I loaned my other one and I don't know where it's at now, but this, you just put a pencil through here, drag it along there, and you get a perfect center line on a piece of wood. Just one of many many things but like I say there are thousands of projects you can make on a 3d printer for woodworking just for example but but 3d printers are do-it-yourselfers there is so many projects and, and you could also uh, make a rocket I like rockets you know <laughs> but today what I want to show you guys is this is a uh, inexpensive and it's I'm not even gonna say middle of the road it's on the fairly big side but it's easy to assemble and it has all the good features of a nice 3D printer but we got to get it out of this box so we can really take a look at it and this is the Hornet yeah artillery yeah 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 I want you guys to see what we got because I'm not even well I don't know we'll see how this is boxed up it's I'll say one thing uh, for all the 3D printers I've ever received this is probably one of the biggest boxes I've ever seen and yet it's not the biggest uh, 3D printer that's ever come in so a lot of it must be pre-assembled, which it looks like it uh, well boxed. Yeah, it's really well boxed. Look at this thing. It's like, man, it's like wow. Yeah. So we got a nice, yep, nice big thick old manual with it. So that's a good thing. Looks like we got the, yep, the boat. Wow, fancy boating tube. I have never seen one like that. Wow, that is fancy. And we've got the, okay, this is kind of an odd looking item, but this is what the spool for the three uh, filament will be actually riding on. And this is a big heavy unit too. Whew, okay, this is going to be a very interesting setup. Wow, okay, there's the build plate and the top. So it basically looks like it comes in two pieces. Yeah, and we'll get the big, there's even a handle. So you can carry this thing around. All right, wait, let's see if we can get her out. So there's your top section there. You just kind of, yeah, that's, you can see it. There's the top section. And put that aside. Obviously that's gonna have to mount into the base. Now the base looks like it's completely, yep, pretty much one piece all set up and ready to go. So all we gotta do is a little bit of minimal. I'm gonna get this out and then I'm gonna throw this box out of the way so we can get into this. This, this looks like, wow, this looks like a really nice printer. Okay, let's get the box out of here. Set it aside. And <laughs> the next question, where's the front? I think this is the front here. Okay, so I got the base out of the box from the bottom of the box. And here's the whole base. She's still packed up with tape. And there's our heat plate. This is really going to determine the bigger or the size of the work area, at least this way. And again, something like this even is fair. This is actually scaled up 150% large. So you could easily make something like that on here. There's, look at the, you know, you've got all kinds of space to work with. So it's a good size printer right off the bat. And it has really nice looking, it looks like a really nice setup. Looks like there's a tool package here. I'm going to assume that's what, oh, no, we've got wheels. Ah, and we've got some, a cable. And wow, wow, really nice wrench, really nice wrench to go with that and some parts here looks like spare parts and also okay SD card something here that I'm not really familiar with I'm trying to figure out looks like a USB plug to wow what is that huh I have to look that one up in the manual and this should be the extruder this is the yeah it is wow look at this thing that's neat that's the extruder right there that's where the hot plastic is going to come out of PLA or whatever you're running and it has side fans cooling fans to help cool stuff and control temperature and it has a really unique plug I can't say I've ever seen that sort of thing before it's a fancy plug 
This looks in total like a really nice build. Let's get the top on. Okay, so I had to stop here for a second because we've got a problem. There's a, a belt hanging loose under here. This for the table here, this way for the, uh, I guess we'll call it the Y axis. And it's an easy fix, but I'm gonna show you a close up of what's wrong in case you pull yours out of the box and you've got a similar problem or run into the uh, same problem. Also, the other problem I ran into, which I did this sort of intentionally because I thought it was funny, but uh, this is actually on backwards. So we gotta turn this around and put it back on. So I'm gonna take this off and put it back on, but we're also gonna fix the uh, problem here with the, uh, the belt drive for the for the table for the uh, for the bed. Okay, there we go. So down underneath here, uh, we're going to get right down here to the belt, and you can see right here, this piece here is through here is loose. Fact is, there's nothing holding it. And well, how this is done is normally this comes through, is wrapped over, then the teeth of the belt interlock, and then you put that little uh, cable clamp on. It. Hopefully, let's you know, see if I can get a good shot of that thing. And hopefully you can see the cable clamp there, and that's where the problem is on this machine. So this would be a real disaster for somebody that's new to 3D printing that has no idea that they have to look for something like this. Uh, we got the top straightened out, put the Bowden tube in, which is a very bizarre, and we sort of don't like the Bowden tube idea. Everything is all in one. If you have a problem, you're really going to have a problem with that if that, anything ever goes wrong. Uh, also, of course, mounted this. Uh, this is for your uh, spooling, and I don't know where to put it because it's sort of supposed to sit out here someplace, but the spooling has to go up through here. So this is an unhappy situation. Don't like it. Should have put this up on top or somewhere else and had direct drive or something else would have been really whiz-bangy. Uh, I've spent about two hours fixing the belt on the, the bed, and I... I have done the best I can with what they had. It was too short to do a proper fix, so I'm hoping that what I did will, it'll stay together. I think it'll stay together. It might over time slide back out. This crazy thing, which I couldn't understand what it was, turns out it's a USB with a flash uh, SD card uh, adapter thingy here. It's like with a little lighty thingy here and stuff. So that's pretty cool. I mean, you know, it'll be handy for whatever. Got spare parts. I had to do uh, all the wheels on the machine with the wrench to tighten and get everything right to where it's you know everything is is uh you know just where it should be for tightness against the wheels running the the rails here uh this is all the tools i needed to fix that belt problem which like i said uh, really hung me out to dry because there really wasn't enough belt left by whoever cut the belt uh, it was so short, there was just no room for error, so I had to, you know, really fight the belt and even use channel locks to hold it in place while I tried to get a zip tie back down on it. But we got it fixed, so now we're ready to roll. So now we're going to get some filament, and I guess we'll try to make a benchy, and we'll see how the Hornet does. After a very short time of leveling the bed, we are now doing what we call the benchy, which is the little boat, which sort of proves the machine, you know, accurate and does a nice print job. Uh, right now we've got quite a little bit of a ways to go, but the hull of the boat already is starting to look really good So she looks like she's doing a terrific job now for software and Cura. I'm using artillery, but I'm using artillery genius, which is a uh, Similar I guess we'll say similar build plate and similar size and machine to the Hornet here And it seems like that seems like the instructions and everything with Cura seems like that's working It's a little bit uh, Quieter than anything I have ever had in here for a 3D. Love the huh, full-size SD card. I'll, I'll never stop blabbing about that. But the power supply is at the back. The uh, this is okay, I guess. I'm I'm not sure how I feel about having the roll of filament out here at the front. But I guess if you're doing a lot of filament changes, this would be super handy. It would be a really nice thing to have. The Overall build is really looks like they put a lot of time and quality and thought cable management is off the charts I have never seen a machine with cable management that is this good. You know, it's just it's the best cable management I've ever seen Price wise, I'm gonna check on that and see what we're doing at like looking at discounts and stuff So I can tell you what the best price is on this one now the build plate is around 220 by 220 I think it is by uh, I'll have to get back to you on that yeah okay build volume is 220 by 220 by 250 millimeter <clears throat> and if you're in the US of A 
That's 8.7 inches by 8.7 inches by 9.8 inches. The 9.8, of course, being the height of the, the Hornet in this case. She's a sweet little machine, I'll tell you that. Uh, I noticed that uh, 3D Printing Nerd uh, did this uh, review about a year ago. He didn't uh, really kind of, you know, I sort of have to agree with everything he said because the Bowden tube is probably the only thing that's kind of a bit of a fall down. Everything else about the machine seems to be pretty good. Granted, okay, it showed up with a broken uh, belt drive underneath the bed here, but uh, I've fixed it and like I said, I'm, I'm hoping it'll stay together and that's the end of it for the time being. It's a shame that happened. Okay, so she just finished the benchy. I shut the power off almost right after. We let her cool down a little bit and then shut her off. But the benchy looks absolutely amazing. I just, I can't get over the detail. There's no stringy or hair. And I want to just say something right now before anybody gets any ideas. This is not a fresh spool. This spool has been laying around for maybe more than six months. And I've been just storing it in a regular Ziploc bag with some uh, silicone but it's, you know, to keep it dry, but it's been just laying around. So this is old filament. So, you know, things can go wrong when you have old filament. This thing is absolutely, I tell you, the Benchy absolutely destroyed. Wow, this really, this really proves this is, this, this 3D printer is capable of doing everything a 3D printer in this size and this price range wise, I'm finding it on the internet for like under $200. I'm gonna give you a link so you can get it for like a really fantastic price if you're interested. Also, the other thing that I wanted to mention was uh, these. I, you gotta have a pair of these, and usually these come with 3D printers. This one here is probably the first one you know, that came in the door that didn't have a little pair of little, little you know, snips for uh, snipping, which was surprising but everything else seems to be very complete and it included a lot of extra features that you, know, you may or may not need or use, including a, a printer cable for the side. But for a basic quick setup and for a low, ball, low dollar price, this is an excellent printer, not just for entry, but if you're like, you know, say you want a printer farm or something and you want to have 10 of these things rolling, you know, it would be a Great machine, very quiet, and it seems to be really reliable. So I'm not having any issues with this. I think the next print we're gonna do is one of these. Yeah, we're gonna bang one of these off just because we can, you know. And of course, the Benchy is just, a, see, I don't know if we can get the camera to focus on this, that's always the problem here, but uh, the Benchy is absolutely, it's clean. I mean, that is a really clean looking model. Look at the hull here, like the lines through here. There's no separation, no funny business. There's there's no heavy lining, you know, nothing going on or skid marks or anything going on, you know. It's like the top here, I'm looking at the roof line, all the detail in the roof is perfect. The chimney came out just, I don't want to call it a chimney, I don't know, smokestack. Yep, there's a little hair on the smokestack here from maybe the dog, I don't know. <laughs> and the archways here are good, all the holes, nice, round, clean. Nothing stupid going on at all. That that is every part as good a benchy as any I've ever seen. Uh, this one here is off a machine that's like uh, three, four times the price of this thing. And this one even has some flaws in it. You know, it's just some little, you know, separation lines and things where, you know, she didn't quite come out that good. In fact, the top isn't even as uh, clean looking as this one. And the back is about the same. Actually, I think the print over here is actually better than this one, and yet uh, for a very low price, pretty remarkable. So the overall uh, opinion right now is that this is a really, for the price, it's a really sweet machine. I do like it. <laughs> uh, please like, share, and subscribe before I forget to do that, and happy July the 4th. I think we'll, try, we'll probably have this video released uh, today, which is July the 4th. I'm working in an oven, uh, also known as a two-car garage. It's about 110 degrees in here today, all day. Uh, makes for good 3D printing. <laughs> we stress test the machine, you know, like tried it in high humidity, high temperature, and it still made a good benchy. So. <laughs> the other thing about this one is that it's, it's an easy to put together. It's an easy build, like you've only got you know, 90% of it is already built when it comes in the box. So there isn't, a, you know, two screws on each of these 
sides, a couple of plugs to put in, and you're basically up and running and ready to rock and roll. Uh, I am still going to use Cura. Uh, there is some other software out there that's recommended that you can use for this particular machine for the Hornet, but I'm going to stick with Cura. The uh, other thing I was going to mention, I think I mentioned, I'm going to put a link uh, somewhere below where you can get these pliers. Uh, these little snips are absolutely super handy. And the other thing I'm going to do, of course, tonight is I'm going to print another one of these off just because I've got everything set up here. So I'll just go ahead and fire it up and uh, make another print of something I want. Because I want another one of these, but I want it as a gift for a, a friend of mine. So if you're interested, uh, check the links below. I'll have some nice, uh, hopefully we'll have some nice discount prices. And I'm pretty sure we're looking somewhere below $200 for this thing right now. It's like, wow, you know. Uh, I've, I've seen it for some pretty remarkable low prices and it is every part of 3d machine that that you want so yeah the uh, build plate is uh, textured glass which uh, if you have it set once you get your bed leveling that's always the big thing with all 3d printers I don't care if it's a big one or a small one the bed leveling is is a big thing once you get that done you're pretty much on your way and I did the bed leveling really quickly today, and I'm really surprised. The little benchy just stuck to that textured glass, not a problem. But uh, I have seen, if you did not get that bed leveling right, I've seen complaints where people, oh, you know, the part knocked off immediately or, or slid off on me. That's because your bed leveling was wrong. So, you know, it is what it is. Especially with this textured glass, it's a lot easier to get the part to uh, stick to it. Thank you guys and girls for watching Coffee and Tools, and uh, man, it is so hot in here. <laughs> I gotta get out of here, but hey, thanks everybody. Over and out.